Then you keep it clean. Uh, before we get into this, I, I just got to say how grateful I am uh, for all of y'all. Uh, just, just really just grateful in life in general. Um, grateful for our family. Grateful for friends. Uh, grateful for having peace. Just being at a point in life where we have peace. Because uh, that's, that's super important, man. That's really, really important. I'm um, grateful for you all, uh, how active you are on the channel. Um, how engaged uh, you are with everything and how big of a part uh, you all are with everything that goes on here So I, I appreciate that a lot. Just want to give you all a little reminder, man uh, Anyway, I, I do really like Really like what I'm seeing from these Ravens so far uh, I hope it's not a smoke screen, but because I know like Ravens, hey, it's, it's, it's smoke screen season now, man It's smoke screen season now, but I do like this start because I'm hoping, I, I really hope that this can be the turning of a new page. I don't even, you know what? Not even just a turn of a new page and not even just a new chapter in the book. Because I want the old book to sort of uh, be gone. Or you know, I want them to get a newer version of the book that they have right now. Just a newer version of it. Uh, just an upgraded version of it. But it seems like they are off to a good start. And what I mean when I say that is the people that they've been uh they're interested in interviewing like here goes one of them ravens have requested permission to interview vikings pass game coordinator uh brian and angeli I, i'm gonna mess up his name so i'm just letting y'all know in advance brian angelicio for their offensive coordinator position per sources veteran nfl coach helped minnesota to a top five passing offense in 2022 so i like that i like that you see success and you look you say oh man kirk cousins Kirk Cousins. And I know a lot of people get on Kirk Cousins. They they try him. They say he's this, he's that. Kirk Cousins balled this year. He did. He balled this year. Yeah, they came up short again. Um, but Kirk Cousins balled this year, man. Straight up. It was a lot of games where it looked like the Vikings were out of it. Um, and they came back. They had some historic comebacks. Uh, but they he did his thing. And he has been doing his thing for a while now. I know yo, we make jokes about Kirk Cousins. You like that? But Kirk Cousins been doing his thing for a little minute, man. Um, so shout out to Kirk. But Ravens see that they say, "Hey man, this this guy Kirk Cousins balling." And now you do got to look at the situation too. Now you got a Justin Jefferson. It's like, oh okay, yeah, we get it. Uh, and then your your second guy is Adam Thielen. Um, and you got you're like you got a nice little squad over there. But anyway, um, so that was one. Then then there was some more. This, then it got even better. And this was actually before the uh, before the the Vikings uh, before they requested the Vikings pass game coordinator. Um, said among prominent coaching names i'm hearing are firmly on raven's radar firmly so that means hey we really want to talk to these guys we got to we gotta make it happen all right for offensive coordinator former coach head coach frank Reich, and i've heard a lot of ravens fans be like hey yeah that that's the one that's that's one right there that i would love a lot of ravens fans been talking about frank Reich for a minute man a lot of them. Uh, ever since he got fired, and I know so many people say, oh, yeah, that, that's a John Harbaugh hire right there. Oh, that's a good one right there. So we'll see. Um, ch now, this, this is my favorite one right here. This, this is my favorite one right here. Chiefs offensive coordinator Eric B. Enemy. Ooh, that, yeah, that's, that's the one right there. That's the one right there. Because that, and I mean, we've been talking about that for a little minute. Now, um, how would that work? Because Eric B. Enemy, like, he, like, because he's been borderline like a head coach. We've been thinking and wondering, like, man, what, what's going on? Is he going to get an opportunity as a head coach? Because, I mean, you've been seeing the offenses. You've been seeing them. And you've been seeing them with, I know, Tyreek Hill. That was a subject of discussion this offseason, this past offseason. Like, oh, Patrick Mahomes ain't got Tyreek Hill no more. Uh-oh. But... Yeah, now we see that hey, they still bald. They still bald. So shout out to Eric B. Enemy. Shout out to that whole staff because they, yeah, they, they get it. They get it. The way that they do their offense, they just, it's like they have such a good core, but then they, they get creative. They don't get too pretty with it, though. They don't get too fancy with it, but they still remain creative. They still always, always coming up with new stuff. That's one thing that I really like. My guy, um, in oh, I forgot how to pronounce his name. I think it's in or size seven. My apologies, my friend. I I be butchering people's names, as you saw with the Vikings pass game coordinator. But anyway, my guy made a really good point about Ravens' next offensive coordinator. 
Um, because he talked about how it would be nice for them to get an offensive coordinator that came from a successful offense, like I know a Shanahan offense. People been talking about that. Uh, Eagles offense. I know people been looking at their offensive coordinator, their passing game, uh, or QB coach or whatnot. But um, he said, yeah, if they come from an, a, a, a good offense already, that's great. But at the same time, you still need somebody that's going to still be able to come up with some new stuff as well. So if they they do, do doing their thing right now, it's amazing. That's a phenomenal job. But you still need somebody that's going to continue to improve, continue to evolve. See, Greg Roman, he came through, did his thing. It was amazing. It was a night, like I always say about Greg Roman, not a bad offensive coordinator, but just really a great introductory offensive coordinator. It hits a limit. It hits a peak really fast, the Greg Roman offense. Uh, and once it hits that peak, that's it. And it's like everything goes out the window. And, I mean, the situational play calling, that that was kind of there from the beginning. But it just, that's something that progressed to a worse level uh, over time. Um, but it just it, it hit its peak super early. Um, but so that's why you need somebody that's going to continue to evolve this thing, continue to help it grow. So yeah, Eric being to me, that was nice seeing his name on there. And then last but not least, as far as outside guys, uh, Bucks offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich. Now uh, I know people look at the Bucks offense from this past year, like oh Byron Leftwich man, this dude just got fired from the Bucks. <laughs> what does he know? What is he gonna do for the Ravens? Well, um, they did win the division. I mean the division was garbage, but you look at he was offensive coordinator the past couple of years, Super Bowl, um, Brady leading the league in touchdown passes. Was it passing yards too? No, no, probably Patrick Mahomes was passing yards, but leading the league in touchdown passes. Um, so they had something over there. They had something over there. They did not have a run game. They certainly didn't. But you really think like, <laughs> you really think it's gonna be a Ravens team without no run game? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, uh. Like I remember in 2013 when their run game was struggling. I'm like, man, who are these Ravens? It, it was struggling, struggling. It was like, ugh, yuck. What is this? Uh, then they end up bringing in Gary Kubiak the following year. And that run game took off. And we, we like, that was the best the Ravens had ever had an offense. That was the best Ravens offense ever back then, 2014. Uh, and then fast forward five years. Wow, that was only five years later? Man. That seemed like, like from Kubiak, Gary Kubiak, to Greg Roman, that seemed like it was just so much longer, don't it? Like to me at least. It seemed like it was like at least like a 10-year gap. But that was only five years. Five years. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway, um, so yeah, Byron Leftwich is another uh, candidate uh, for them to interview to possibly be the new offensive coordinator. So we'll see. Now, that, those were outhouse guys. Those were guys that are not part of the Ravens right now. Uh, Jeremy Fowler, uh, who, who both of these reports are from. Got to give him his credit. Shout out to Jeremy Fowler. Um, but he also mentioned in-house candidates for the Baltimore Ravens, too. Uh, he talked about T. Martin. And I know T. Martin, that's somebody who a lot of us talked about really from jump. From jump. Even before Greg Roman was, before he stepped down, so to speak. And again, shout out to the Ravens for uh, when it comes to coaches uh, for keeping it very, very classy. Because they, again, they don't want your resume to look bad. They want your resume to look squeaky clean and look good and whatnot. So instead of Ravens being, oh, Ravens fired, we decided to let go this guy, da 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 No, hey, he decided to step away. We mutually decided to part ways. That's yeah, so, okay. We see you. Always appreciate that. Uh, but anyway, um, when before Greg Roman even did that, uh, it was looking like T. Martin was – they, they might have told T. Martin something like a long time ago. I remember when we did the video talking about T. Martin get the, getting the interview with the Bills, off, uh, the offensive coordinators for that position. Um, and then we were like, oh, man, I don't know if he turned it down. I don't know if uh, just they decided to go with what, who, Ken Dorsey, right? Was it Ken Dorsey? I think it's Ken Dorsey. Uh, whoever it was, but they decided to go in another direction. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think it is Ken Dorsey because – uh, shout out to Miami Hurricanes, by the way. But that was um, because yeah, I'm getting him mixed up with Kellen Moore because Kellen Moore is a Cowboys offensive coordinator. He used to be a quarterback in the league, uh, and Ken Dorsey is Bills offensive coordinator. He used to be a quarterback in the league too. Um, but anyway, yeah, and did y'all see that like the last play in the Cowboys 49ers game? I was watching that last night. I'm like, all right, I was like, this is it. 
10 seconds left. All right, Dak Prescott got to show that arm now. And they did that. I'm like, what? Like, you might as well have took a knee. If that's the play you're going to call, you might as well have took a knee, man. Like, you need a touchdown. You're down by seven. And you on, like, your own, what, 35 or 40 yard line, something like that. And they 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 had Dak throw a what, like a six yard pass something like that. Like what what are you doing, man? I I didn't. Anyway, um. So yeah, uh. So T Martin, um. I was thinking like back then that T Martin, if he turned it down or if he just didn't get it, but it seemed like maybe the Ravens were, uh, maybe that maybe they told him they they gave him the air to Costa talk like, hey, you next up, you 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 next up. We brought you in, yeah, as uh, the, the, the wide receiver coach, um, pass game coordinator. I get it mixed up, which one, the, what T. Martin does and what Keith Williams does. I think T. Martin is the wide receiver coach, and I think Keith Williams is the passing game coordinator. No, 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 T. Martin is the passing game coordinator, and Keith Martin is the wide receiver coach. <sighs> I, I, I got it mixed up. My apologies, y'all. It's still early in the morning for me. But anyway, um, I feel like they could have told him, like, hey, T., you next up. You up next after after Greg Roman is going. You up next, but another candidate that Jeremy Fowler also mentioned. Uh, he said in-house candidates T. Martin and James Urban could get a look too. So that's something that uh, we've talked about too with James Urban. Um, I just really wonder about how his and Lamar's relationship is. Uh, for Lamar, uh, James Urban is a quarterbacks coach, but for Lamar to still go out and get his own uh, QB coach. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that really means anything. I, I I just I don't. I wonder how their relationship is. I don't. So I don't know, man. Um, but if it was an in-house hire, which the Ravens they like to do, um, if it was an in-house hire, I would be a little more worried than I already am. Um, just based off philosophy, because if you just promote somebody and, and promotions from within are great in companies it's, it's an amazing thing because it allows you to work your way up work your way up in the system and whatnot and that can a lot of times just show how hard you've been working uh and that you deserve it and whatnot uh, but for the ravens what would just worry me a bit um would be if they did do an in-house hire that that would um allow them to stay true to their current philosophy that much more that would allow the the chance of them staying true to their current philosophy to be that much higher since the person would be already from within now obviously if they bring in somebody from the outside which i would prefer but if they bring in somebody from the outside then their chances of keeping their same philosophy could still be very high because i mean eric DeCosta, john harbaugh could tell them hey we want to run the ball uh, play good defense. You ain't got to worry about defense. Mike McDonald handle that. But we want to run the ball. That's our first priority is running the ball. That's our identity. That's our philosophy. That's what we want to do. Uh, yeah, pass game, cool, but we want to focus on running the ball. So they could tell an outside hire that same thing. But I just feel like with an outside hire, the chances of things changing and improving uh, are significantly higher than if they go with somebody from the inside. But again, everything just boils down to what that outside or even inside person uh, is allowed to do. So we'll see, man. Uh, with James Urban, uh, we know he, uh, I think he was on the Eagle staff before and he worked with, uh, with Michael Vick. Um, so he worked with a quarterback that could throw, could throw that thing down the field and could really get it down the field. Uh, but a quarterback that also could take off as well. Um, and then with T. Martin, uh, he's been the wide receiver coach, I believe. Again, I, I, I'm forgetting it's too early in the morning. But um, he was an offensive coordinator on the collegiate level, I believe. And, and he played quarterback as well. So for, to me, I think that helps so much. And I remember when T. Martin first got hired, we talked about that. I feel like that could help so much because, yeah, he's a wide receiver coach because he can – and he talked about it, too, in his introductory press of how, as a former quarterback, he, he allows, like, he's sort of a, uh, a middleman. He's sort of a liaison uh, between the quarterback and the wide receivers because he's experienced it. He's been through it. So with that, he's experienced life as a quarterback. So he, can, he knows what the quarterbacks are looking for. He knows what the quarterbacks are seeing, what they're reading and whatnot. But then as a wide receiver coach, you get to understand what they're seeing, too. You get to understand their assignments and how they can help that quarterback as well. So it, it goes hand in hand. So, yeah, 
anyway, good job, Ravens. I, I hope it's a thorough search, but it is a search that um, they got to get down to it, man. Like, yeah, they they like they like really got to move, man. They got to move because whatever happens with Lamar Jackson, um, like time is ticking. Time is ticking uh, for whatever the next step is gonna be. But in order for for Lamar Jackson, because we we don't know what's what's going on. Like I said in the previous video from yesterday, we don't know what's going on with him um, and the Ravens, between the Ravens. We don't know what the talks are, what the, what the deals are, what the offers are. We don't, we don't know none of that stuff. Um, nobody really does, except obviously those, the parties involved. Um, but this is like the first domino in whatever it's going to be. Uh, whoever the quarterback is going to be, hopefully it will be Lamar. But this, the offensive coordinator is the first domino in this whole thing. And then you still got some guys that um <clears throat> they haven't well we haven't even heard about them requesting interviews for. I know there've been a lot of talk about uh I think um the 49ers their passing game coordinator or QB coach and then the Eagles passing game coordinator. I'm like, man, hey, like yeah, Eagles passing game coordinator cool, yeah, but I mean don't just stop there. Ask about their offensive coordinator too. Ask for both. Do the same thing with the 49ers to ask for both. Like Hey, reach out there. I mean, you ask for Eric Bieniemy, and he's an offensive coordinator right now. Like, so hey, ask for another offensive coordinator too. Like, don't stop, don't stop. But anyway, Ravens they 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 seem to be off to a good start. Uh, so we'll see how this thing goes. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. Like I said earlier, I really appreciate y'all, and we out.